Good afternoon, everyone. And on behalf of GS Lab, I welcome you all to the fireside chat on building effective data science practice. My name is Amandi Blit, and I'm senior marketing executive at GS Lab. Today, I have with me our chief data scientist, Mr. Vineet Rena, and principal architect, Srinath Krishnamurti. They will be talking with us about the years of learning in setting up data science team and solving problems on the authored book, Building an Effective Data Science Practice. The paperback and Kindle edition of this book is already available on Amazon. And we encourage you all to post your questions on the chat window. One question chosen amongst the submitted ones will get a chance to win a free hard copy of this book. The Q&A for this session will be taken at the end. So, well, with a rapid growth of digital data being generated from millions of devices, there are endless possibilities of innovative solutions that could take up a shape. As consumers, data science is already a part of our lives. Organizations are trying to solve complex problems and setting up the data science practice teams. This book would have not come at a more opportune time. Reinforced with real life examples, it allows one to confidently determine the strategic answers to effectively align their business goals with the operations of their data science teams. Before we dive deeper, I would like to introduce our today's speakers, Mr. Vineet Rena. Mr. Vineet is a chief data scientist and has led the effort of setting up a data science group at GS Labs, which has now successfully executed data science projects in diverse fields like healthcare, IoT, communications, etc. For most of his 17 years of his professional career, he has been associated with multiple data science projects and has two US patents on his name. Joining him along and co author of the book, Srinath Krishnamurti is a principal architect. His key responsibility has been to bootstrap and now to lead the data science capability at GS Lab. A TOGAF 9 certified architect, Srinath specializes in aligning business goals to the technical roadmap and data strategy for his clients. During his 17 years of professional experience, he has primarily worked on data mining, predictive modeling, and analytics in various areas such as CRM, retail, finance, life sciences, healthcare, video conferencing, industrial IoT, and smart cities. They together started the data science practice at GS Lab, and it has taken good four plus years to bring this practice to current shape, solving multiple business challenges. So while Srinath, I briefly touched upon a few areas of your expertise. Can you share with us the flavor of the kind of the problems you have solved using data science? Yeah, hi, Amandi. Thanks. Uh, nice to be here. So uh, the kinds of projects that uh, we worked on or the kinds of problems we have solved. Uh, so data science has uh, quite a variety of applications these days. Uh, like you mentioned uh, at the start, uh, one of the areas is many devices which are giving data and the whole space of IoT and uh, digital transformation based on that is often uh, driven through uh, data science work. Uh, a couple of examples in this are, uh, for example, in the industry which stores liquids in large tanks. Uh, if you are able to predict when certain activities are required, for example, when a liquid needs to be heated, uh, these predictions using data science models can then be used in some kind of operational optimizations like scheduling the activities so that the overall power consumption is reduced, uh, for example. Uh, other examples could be if you are able to predict the sales uh, at different uh, stores or gas stations and uh, those predictive models could be used to determine when certain gas stations or stores would need inventory and accordingly optimize uh, the dispatch to those stores of the various inventory needs. So this is a kind of in the digital transformation and IoT space. Uh, apart from this, data science can also be used to add uh, useful features to a product, for example, like the video conference we are having right now, particularly these days in work from home situations, we often have a lot of background noise, dogs barking or children crying and traffic. Uh, so data science can be used to create models which can suppress noise uh, in real time in these kind of conferences. So that's a useful feature to add to a product. 
uh, apart from that, in some cases, entire products or platforms are based entirely on data science. For example, uh, if we want to detect health conditions using voice samples like uh, uh, asthma, nasality, Alzheimer's, uh, stress, uh, this kind of intelligence uh, typically relies entirely on data science these days. So, such a platform uh, completely relies on data science models for that. So, these are a few kinds of projects that Vinny and I have worked on in the past few years. And of course, the classical data mining, like clustering, customer behavior analysis, and those kinds of things uh, are a given as well. So, yeah, those uh, kinds of projects. Anything you want to add, Vinny? Yeah, uh, just remembered uh, another example of uh, a project uh, where we added data science to an existing project. So this project used to show all the messages to the user from his different email accounts and social media accounts. So uh, we added a piece that would go through all his messages and find out the action items automatically and show them to the user so that he can get a high level overview of what all people have asked him to do, like uh, the he would see in his window that someone has asked him to set up a meeting at so and so time uh, or complete a training what is the name of the training what is the last date and so on so so uh, that was in uh, nlp domain so that in that is interesting to in fact know the diverse areas that your practice has touched upon so we need if i would have to ask you um, what was the driving factor or the inspiration behind writing this as a book yeah, uh, so uh, when we were in the process of setting up a data science practice uh, in our organization, and we were also trying to do it for our customers, uh, we realize, realized that there were many books that talked about a uh, lot of aspects, uh, mostly technical aspects, uh, but we didn't find a book that talked about uh, all the aspects involved, uh, and such a book would have helped us at that time. So when we learned all these aspects while setting up a data science practice ourselves, we felt it could be useful to uh, share this knowledge about all these aspects uh, with others through a book that talks about all these aspects. Uh, and uh, all the notes and presentations that we had created while learning these aspects became the skeleton of the book. Uh, and uh, our hope is that it will help uh, people like us who want to set up a data science practice for themselves. Definitely, Vinny, I echo the same. And um, from this, I could gather that there is a deeper insight captured in this book from your own practices of setting up the team and solving the problems. And I believe it will be helpful for practitioners as well as for someone who's setting the practice, maybe just ground up. Um, who are others that you think could benefit from this book, Srinath? Yeah, uh, like Vinit mentioned, uh... The few things we learned uh, during our journey and also uh, uh, similar things we saw when working with some of our partners and clients in incubating data science in their organizations as well. So, uh, like you said, kind of technology leaders who are early in the data science journey, uh, that's kind of the uh, maybe primary audience. Uh, apart from that, uh, data scientists uh, who already are practicing data science uh, we believe they would also benefit from getting the entire end-to-end -end view of, uh, apart from the data science models, what all happens to deliver a complete solution to achieve the business goals and how to incorporate uh, the business objectives into uh, what techniques they choose and all those aspects, I think will be helpful to data scientists. Uh, we also have many peers in the industry uh, who are, for example, the software engineering field or other fields and who are curious to explore data science, uh, we feel this book will help them give a picture of the overall field and conceptual understanding of a lot of techniques. Uh, and uh, I think the past couple of years, the role of data science manager has become more and more important in many organizations. And uh, some of our coverage and parts three and four of the book, things like reference architecture, uh, the skills required, structuring a team, and monitoring progress of data science projects. All these things will be helpful to uh, data science managers as well. So, yeah, those are a few folks who might also benefit from. Thanks, Srinath. 
um, while we touched upon the audience um, for whom this book would be relevant, it would be interesting to know how this book is structured. So we need, if you can take up uh, you know, this question and define what are the various structures in which this book has been divided into. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, I think I'll just talk about the different parts uh, that are actually uh, in the book. Uh, so the book evolves from uh, one part to another. Uh, so it starts with the first part, which talks about data science and its benefits in general to business. Uh, the second part then talks about concrete problems that can be solved using data science because data science is often just uh, uh, taught in classes, but what are the concrete problems it can solve? What is the thought process needed to solve those problems? How the different techniques come together? What are the different things you need to take care of to solve problems in different domains like NLP, computer vision, and uh, all those things? Uh, then we go on to the third part where we go further into detail uh, into the techniques. Uh, and the libraries and tools that implement these techniques, uh, the popular ones, of course. Uh, and uh, more importantly, we talk about uh, what techniques could be more relevant to your business objectives, uh, because you cannot just blindly apply any techniques to any problems. Of course, you'll get some results, but uh, for your business objectives, uh, what are uh, what techniques will be more effective? And then uh, we take an example reference architecture, like Srinath already mentioned. Uh, explaining how different technologies uh, can be, you can combine different technologies uh, into a, an architecture that you can start with. And then as your data science practice matures, uh, you can evolve that uh, architecture. Uh, and finally, the uh, uh, fourth part of the book, it talks about uh, the different kind of skills that are needed, the roles that exist in data science teams, how you can uh, structure your teams with all these people who have these different roles. Uh, for effectiveness and finally the management aspects like the type of data science projects that you could expect to work on uh, the security concerns regulatory aspects and how do you measure progress because uh, data science projects could go on for years without achieving any concrete results so uh, it's tricky to measure the performance um, uh, of your team uh, and practice so uh, the fourth part also talks about those things yeah, that's interesting, Vineet. Um, quite a holistic perspective has been covered in this book, which would be helpful for engineers and I suppose also for the people who might be starting up the practice or for some even to correct the course. Um, while I was going through the book, I came across a mention of cultures in data science, and that was quite an interesting snippet for me to go through. So, Srinath, if you could talk about um, what is the different cultures that you talked about, you know, monastic versus wild west. So for the audience, if you can elaborate more on what are these cultures? Yeah, that's one of the uh, interesting threads in the book. Uh, so, I mean, we work with uh, many kinds of data scientists and for me, it's always been amazing how different data scientists uh, approach the problems in their own unique ways. Uh, like given the same problem, different data scientists will approach it differently with different thought processes and techniques in mind. And uh, I, I think I, I won't consider myself a data scientist. I know some ML and the techniques that they use, and I uh, I understand. Uh, I think how data scientists approach their craft because I work with many of them closely. Uh, and generally, I've seen that broadly there are. Uh, two kinds of thought processes that data scientists tend to have. Uh, one kind of data scientist uh, tries to understand uh, the kind of truth underlying the data, like uh, what are the relationships among the variables, uh, what is the underlying process which might have actually caused these observations or generated this data. And uh, he tries to model that typically using some kind of mathematical equation. And only after he understands the truth underlying the data, he goes on to use it for predicting things for the future observations. And uh, the other kind of data scientists are those who focus on predictive accuracy right from the start. They are not particularly interested in long term truths or what caused the observations. They just want to be able to predict accurately. And as new data comes in, they will frequently train their models again and again. Uh, so that's the second culture which 
focuses solely on predictive accuracy. And uh, yeah, so these are the two cultures. We kind of call them the monastic culture and the Wild West culture, respectively. Uh, and it's been uh, quite a uh, quite a challenging and uh, interesting experience to formalize this intuition with its uh, help. So many that I tried to put a structure around all this, and uh, that was quite uh, helpful. And I think it'll also be useful uh, to uh, the readers of the book in their data science journey as well, mainly because uh, we think the business objectives should impact which culture is appropriate, and that then dictates which techniques are to be used and, and implications all the way up to things like regulatory compliance. So we cover all these aspects in the book. Yeah, the cultures actually are an important theme, as Srinath said, that runs throughout the book, and uh, it was challenging to uh, explain it. And uh, the book starts with an introduction about it, and then uh, as we explain the other concepts, then we are able to talk in more concrete details about these cultures towards the later parts of the book. So uh, you can actually, uh, if uh, somebody reads the book, uh, he can feel that uh, undercurrent throughout the book about these cultures. So means which culture you seem to have adopted while you have been doing this practice? Uh, so uh, that's a very difficult question to answer. Uh, at least for uh, people answering it for themselves. Uh, but I would say it has been, uh, it's dependent on the project. So some projects where we wanted to understand the domain and the purpose of data science was to understand the domain in more detail. Uh, there we had to adopt a, a monastic culture, but there are uh, other projects like where you just want to be able to predict accurately so that you can accordingly optimize uh, uh, different things. So there we had to uh, approach the other, uh, adopt the other culture, the wild west. That's great to know that it depends upon more on the kind of business requirements that are there and the kind of project you're working upon. And I hope the users could, uh, you know, implement the same while they are practicing. Um, now a question that I've been thinking about. Um, for practitioners with so much of workload and writing a book in such a depth is definitely a challenging task. Tell us about the journey from the day you thought about today when so many readers are actually reading your book and finding it useful. How does it feel? So, like I mentioned, when we uh, discussed this idea of the book, uh, we believed in the book. Uh, we felt it would be useful. Uh, and we were uh, also uh, apprehensive about whether we would get time to write the book uh, with the other commitments. Uh, but with some uh, adjustments, uh, some more discipline, uh, we could uh, generate content. Uh, so that was actually smooth, uh, I would say. But uh, there were other challenges uh, that we had not anticipated when we began. Uh, so some of these challenges Srinath will also talk about. Uh, there were challenges like uh, coming to agreement between the uh, two of us on content and timelines convincing the uh, editors, the technical reviewers on these aspects or getting convinced by them. So those were some of the challenges we had not anticipated. Uh, Srinath, do you want to add to this list? Yeah, I mean, it's a long list, <laughs> but uh, I think the main challenge, like Minit mentioned, was uh, uh, coming to agreement with respect to at the right level of detail and uh, uh, based on the audience we had in mind. And uh, I think, although it was quite challenging having uh, the two of us along with the editors from A Press, I think eventually it led to a good uh, overall balanced coverage. Uh, and uh, I think personally, I kind of envy we need that is disciplined. Whenever I tried to be disciplined, uh, the content I produced was. I mean, quite uh, awful or at least not very satisfactory, uh, to put it mildly. So uh, I had to kind of uh, allow myself to be disciplined often. A lot of the chapters were actually written in my uh, Nexon car in the hills around today, like Tamini, Mulshi, Ambi Valley, and those kinds of places. Uh, 
but uh, eventually i think uh, after all these challenges and discussions particularly uh, editors from may press i think we need uh, matt was particularly helpful right during the initial days and uh, right now we are hearing from peers in the industry uh, some of whom are finding the book useful there are also some suggestions, but generally it seems like uh, folks are finding it useful. So that is quite uh, rewarding at the end of it all. So Srinath mentioned he was uh, envious of me for the discipline I had to inculcate for this book, but uh, I would say it was the other way around. I would be envious when he would tell me he's writing a chapter in front of a lake, sitting in his car. And so it was actually yeah. the other way around. So I think that's how you both complement each other. And that is the result that the book is out there and definitely would be a treat to the audience and as well. And um, at GS Lab, we feel proud that we have leaders of your ilk. You not only have the technical depth, but at the same time, you can very well relate to the business challenges and appreciate those. Um, it was fun listening to both of you and I'm sure the audience will definitely echo this feeling. Um, we have some questions from the audience now, which we will be taking. So the first one is for you, Srinath. Um, the question is, how does building a data science practice differ from building a software development practice? Okay, so that's a bit interesting. So, uh, so I think maybe this question is arising because Data science is also largely uh, done using software. So maybe that's where the question is coming from. Um, so uh, I think data science practice, uh, the main focus is to adopt scientific practices, like things like applying the scientific method rigorously, being able to hypothesize and design experiments to validate those hypotheses uh, and the thought process that goes behind this uh, kind of scientific approach is uh, usually different from what happens in software development so when we are when we are uh, doing software development to create a product a software product or technology we usually have requirements uh, they could be functional, non-functional, but then we just engineer, write code uh, to fulfill those requirements and create a product. In data science, the iterative data science process is what is much more important. And uh, I mean, I could also say that theoretically, data science could be done without using software. I mean, a data scientist could just use pen and paper to do whatever it does. It will just take much longer. So. Uh, I think uh, that's the key difference and uh, the data, data science practice needs to focus on uh, the scientific method and improving the models and correspondingly uh, even the metrics used to track the uh, progress of the team, uh, all those aspects of the management side also are quite different for data science and software development. And uh, I think one other major factor which is often discovered too late is data science depends entirely on data. It's quite obvious, but uh, uh, having access to all the data uh, of good quality data, uh, that's what data science entirely relies on. Uh, so it's interdisciplinary and often uh, there are a lot of dependencies on other teams uh, which go to creating an end to end solution successfully. Uh, that is also an additional challenge for uh, data science practices to be successful. Like Yeah, thanks, Srinath. Um, we have one more question here. So, Vinny, um, this one is for you. Um, data science is seen as one of the most promising career paths for many. So, according to you, what are some of the key skills one should master to succeed as a data scientist? So, uh, some of these skills uh, needed, we have talked about in the book extensively. Uh, hopefully that will be helpful uh, to readers. Uh, uh, I'll talk briefly about uh, the skills that we think are needed. So the first uh, uh, primary skill that is needed is uh, 
math and statistics because that's what uh, actually does the things under the hood. That's what's actually producing results. Uh, but then this uh, statistics and math you apply using software. So you need uh, you write code uh, in data science. So program programming skills and software skills is the second uh, skill I would say that's needed. Then the ability to understand uh, domains in depth. So we have seen domain insights are really crucial for uh, building that right model because uh, building a model is very easy, but building a model that actually works well generalizes. Uh, sometimes domain insights are very crucial for that, uh, not only for building the model, but also for evaluating the model. And finally, like Srinath had also mentioned, scientific temperament, uh, because it involves uh, experimentation. You keep doing experiments, uh, they either fail or they don't produce uh, very good results. You learn from them, you tweak your experiments, then again run experiments. You keep doing this till you uh, actually get some useful results. So. Uh, that experimentation is there in data science and uh, that's why it's it's called uh, a science so so i think those are four uh, main skills uh, at a very broad level that would be needed if somebody wants to do data science yeah thanks Vinay. um i hope we were able to answer the requested questions and in the interest of time we can only to take some of them today but our authors will be taking the rest of these questions offline so do ensure to drop in your queries and thank you to all the attendees for taking out time and joining this event. This session will be available on all our official handles as an on-demand webinar. So you can check out all the links there and we hope that this book helps you in your journey. And once again, thanks to our experts, Srinath and Vineet for sharing your time and experiences with us. Thanks, Amandeep, for inviting us to this fireside chat and uh, thanks everyone for joining. Yeah, uh, thanks uh, everyone for joining and uh, thanks somebody for the uh, interesting questions and discussion. Thank you everyone.